Hi, my name is Dave Heller, and I'm a principal at Voluble Insights. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the principles of a quantitative social media analysis and how these types of studies can help generate compelling evidence for use in commercial litigation. In our experience, social media is often underutilized by attorneys and experts who are involved in cases where consumer action or belief is at issue. Although it's becoming increasingly common to see some reference to online media evidence in case filings and expert reports, the use is often isolated and lacks the type of rigor that is required by the courts. In many cases, litigants present a small number of anecdotal posts, which are shown in isolation absent broader context. Although this can be compelling evidence in certain circumstances, if for instance the posts are indicative of actual confusion, it is often challenged on the basis of representativeness and generalizability. In other cases, Experts who do attempt to perform a broader analysis will face criticism or exclusion if they are unable to properly clean spam, bots, and other irrelevant content from their dataset. When done correctly, quantitative social media analyses generate powerful evidence. These types of analyses make it possible for experts to support conclusions about the spread of consequences beyond an initial action. They can similarly show the before and after effect of a particular action on consumer discussion or interpretation. For instance, a quantitative social media analysis could be an effective tool for measuring the spread of consumer confusion following the launch of an allegedly confusing new product. These types of analyses are also effective tools for linking a particular outcome to a particular party's action. For example, one might show the evolution of consumer discussion following the launch of a controversial new marketing campaign. They also make it possible to put an event or action in context by comparing it to a benchmark performance, condition, or competitor. This can be an especially useful tool for defendants in IP matters who are looking to contextualize instances of consumer confusion put forth by the plaintiffs. When designing a social media study, the first step is to think about how the structure of the analysis and how it's going to be used. There are many different types of studies that can be developed, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. In this video, I'll be covering some of the most common approaches. The first is accounting analysis. This takes the form of an assessment of the overall volume of a particular type of consumer comment. In some cases, this can be compelling on its own if the numbers are big in absolute terms, but it can face criticism for lack of context. For instance, is the number presented significant compared to what? The second is a time series analysis. This analysis sets out to measure the prevalence of a particular type of comment and how it has evolved over time. A time series can be useful for putting consumer commentary in context by showing how the conversation at a particular point in time compares to others. The next is a more complex type of study called a network analysis. Network analyses look at a map of connections between users to understand how they relate to each other, which can offer insight into the types of consumers who are likely to be relevant for further study. Lastly, a content analysis can offer powerful insights in the right circumstances. Content analysis is a method of studying and analyzing different types of content to find patterns, themes, and meanings within them. They are most useful when analyzing what topics are being discussed among a given set of posts. In any quantitative analysis of online media, the first step is building out a dataset that will form the foundation of the analysis. The decisions made at this stage are crucial, as they naturally flow through to the rest of the analysis and the eventual conclusions that rest upon the study. We'll walk through some of the most common considerations at this stage. The first is determining the period of time you are interested in studying. Ensuring the right time period is captured requires familiarity with the details of the case and the timeline of events. Next is determining which platform or platforms should be included in the analysis. Each platform has its own unique set of characteristics that influence the availability and usefulness of data. Selecting the right platform requires one to be thoughtful and consider carefully what fits your particular needs in terms of audience, content type, platform organization, data availability, and so on. Once the timeline and platform have been selected, the next stage is identifying relevant content. Finding content of interest can be done in a variety of ways, such as by searching for a set of keywords, collecting entire forums or subsections of platforms, or some combination thereof. We can help tailor your data collection to ensure you're finding content that is helpful based on the needs of the case. Once content has been collected, it will be necessary to clean and validate the dataset that has been generated. Typically, cleaning is required to remove junk, spam, false positives, bots, and other types of irrelevant or undesirable content. This is an important step to ensure your dataset stands up to the rigor of the courts, and again is something that we can help with. Last, 
it's a good idea to perform validation to establish an error rate and get a sense of what's included in your dataset. Once you've done this, you're likely ready to start your analysis. That's where I'll leave you for today. Remember, although quantitative social media analyses can be challenging to get right, when they're done properly, they generate compelling evidence for use in commercial litigation. If you have a case where you think social media could be useful, please reach out to us. Our team would be happy to review the details of your case and provide an initial assessment of what type of analysis would be possible free of charge.